Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, hello, my name is Gabby and welcome. So today I have another collab for you guys and today's collab is with one of my favorite people here on YouTube and by far one of my absolute favorite paranormal YouTubers here on this platform, Michael Scott. Michael Scott is one of the kindest people I've ever met through YouTube and his video quality has been amazing since day one. I don't know how he does it. I don't know how you do it, Michael, but your video quality and your research and everything you do absolutely blows me away. So you guys have to go check him out. I mean, okay, wait, I'm going to let him explain his channel a little bit more himself. Hey Gabby, thank you so much for having me on your channel. I'm so excited to do this collab with you and I'm very excited to see your video. For those of you who do not know who I am, my name is Michael. I'm a paranormal investigator and I have a creepy, spooky, eerie little YouTube channel. I spend a lot of time traveling around to different haunted locations trying to gather evidence that ghosts and spirits exist. But I don't just focus on hauntings. I do videos on aliens and cryptids and creepypastas, urban legends, anything spooky and creepy. So after you get done watching Gabby's video, come check out my channel where I'll be talking about a mass alien abduction that happened not too far from my house. Which is kind of rare, you don't hear it all the time. A mass alien abduction, a group of people all in the same place being abducted, it's pretty cool. So like I said, when you're done with Gabby's video, if you wanna come check out my channel, come check it out. Once again, Gabby, thank you for having me on your channel and maybe I'll see some of you soon. Bye. So thank you, Michael, for joining me here on my channel. I can't wait to watch your video. And my video today is going to be about a case that it's going to have you thinking. It's a case that I've wanted to cover for quite a while now. And since I'm doing a collab with Michael and he talks about a lot of spooky, strange topics on his channel, but one of the topics that he really focuses on is aliens. And this disappearance case, one of the theories behind it has to do with an alien abduction. So I thought it was pretty fitting. So with all that being said, let's get right into it. Um, quick PSA before I get into the video. I looked up how to pronounce Melbourne, Australia. It's not Melbourne. Like there's not a hard R. Apparently it's Melbourne. Like that's how they pronounce it in Australia. So out of respect for my Australian viewers, I'm gonna be pronouncing it the way that you guys do. I think that's correct, Melbourne. And also, it's just fun to say. So, let's let's get into it. This is the very, very strange disappearance of Frederick Valentich. Frederick Valentick was born on the 9th of June in the year 1958 in Melbourne, Australia. In the year 1978, he was 20 years old and lived at home with his parents and three siblings in Avondale Heights and worked as a shop assistant at an army disposal store. Frederick was a member of the Air Training Corps and his dream was to have a career in aviation, even though he had previously been rejected from the Royal Australian Air Force. He was studying part-time to become a commercial pilot, but he had failed all five commercial examination subjects and even within the month before his disappearance, he failed three more commercial license subjects. Also, multiple times while flying, he did things he was warned not to do, like fly into a controlled zone and fly into clouds. He simply had a very poor achievement record. To many, it seemed like young Frederick was not destined to become a commercial pilot. A fun fact about Frederick, though, was according to his father, Guido Valentich, Frederick was a huge believer in UFOs, being attacked by beings from another planet in an unidentified flying object was a fear of his. He was what you would call a flying saucer enthusiast. On the 21st of October in the year 1978, young Frederick had a class 4 instrument rating and also 150 hours of flight experience. On this day, he was going to fly out of the airport in Melbourne, Australia, and he was going to go to King Island and then head back to the airport. Now, he told his friends, his family, his girlfriend that while he was at King Island, he was going to get some crayfish. This is very weird because come to find out, there were no passengers waiting for Frederick at King Island, and it was not the season for crayfish. So there's no way he could have even put in an order to get any. 
He departed the airport at 6.19 p.m. and contacted the Melbourne Flight Service Unit to inform them of his presence. This was going to be a 125-mile training flight. During this flight, he was flying a Cessna 182L and going about 160 miles per hour. The weather was fine that day, light winds, and no weather to be worried about. At around 7 p.m., he reached Cape Otway, and this is where the story takes a wild turn. About six minutes later, Frederick made contact with an air traffic controller, and he asked him if there were any other aircrafts in the area, and the air traffic controller told him no. This really confused Frederick because he was seeing something in the sky that night. He told the man that he saw something flying near him. He was asked if he could tell if it was another aircraft similar to his, and Frederick said he couldn't tell if it was or not. This was a statement that was repeated multiple times during the exchange. He described the unknown flying object as having at least four lights and one green light. He claimed he couldn't tell what it was due to the speed of the object. This object apparently went out of sight for a time and then approached his aircraft at multiple different angles during the next couple minutes. Then Frederick claimed the engine of his aircraft was coughing. The very last words the air traffic controller heard Frederick say was, it is not an aircraft. Then there was a sound of metal scraping. Then there was 17 seconds of silence. Then the radio communication was completely lost. What it's doing right now is orbiting. The thing is just orbiting on top of me. It's also got a green light and a sort of metallic, like, it's shiny on the outside. It's just vanished. That strange aircraft's hovering on top of me again. It's hovering and it's not an aircraft. Frederick Valentik and his aircraft were never seen again. Strangely enough, there were reports from the King Island area on the very night this happened from people claiming they saw exactly what Frederick saw. Some saying they saw the UFO and some claiming they simply saw some flashing lights in the sky. Not only just the night Frederick disappeared, but also in the weeks leading up to his disappearance. Officials at the Melbourne Flight Service figured Frederick had crashed. They conducted a sea and air search for him, but couldn't find anything. The Australian Department of Transport also made an attempt to find any remains of the aircraft or figure out what could have happened to the young pilot in training, but they had the same luck. They found nothing. There were a few reports from individuals claiming they spotted aircrafts flying or landing, but none of these could be proven. They couldn't find a reason for the disappearance, but the disappearance was presumed to be fatal, and the case was closed not long after. Then five years later, an engine cow flap washed up on the shore of Flinders Island. It was determined to come from the same type of aircraft Frederick was flying that frightful day of October 21st, 1978. Also, the serial numbers were within the same range as his plane. Out of everyone, the people who believe in aliens were the ones who kind of jumped at this story and were like, this is proof that extraterrestrials are visiting Earth. This was one of the photos taken off of Cape Otway of the sky about 20 minutes before Frederick flew overhead. The photos were sent over to the Phoenix, Arizona-based group called the Ground Saucer Watch. Dr. Haynes wrote of the photographs, Based on the computerized data of the pictures, it is the consensus of the GSW technicians that the images represent a bona fide unknown flying object of moderate dimensions apparently surrounded by a cloud-like vapor slash exhaust residue. The images were said to be too blurry to identify what type of flying object it was. A lot of skeptics dismissed the claim that it was a UFO at all, and they thought that it was simply a cloud formation. There was also a farmer that said he saw an aircraft hovering over his farm the morning after Frederick's disappearance. Strangest thing about his claim is that he said that stuck to the side of this hovering aircraft over his farm was Frederick's aircraft. 
This farmer, though, is unidentified, and people have been trying to find out who he was for years since, so he could be questioned again. This mystery haunts conspiracy theorists to this day. There are so many theories when it comes to this case. The first theory is that Frederick wanted to take his own life, and instead of doing it any other way, he decided to go out with a bang and create this huge mystery surrounding his disappearance. From what I could find out about Frederick, he seemed to have a happy life. The only real thing that maybe made him upset was not doing too great when it came to becoming a pilot. But of course, you never know from the outside what people are going through. All in all though, from what most people knew about him, he was quite content in life. The second theory is that he wanted to leave his old life behind and start new somewhere else. Since his aircraft was also missing, it's unknown if this is true or not, if he did really just want to run away from his past life. His aircraft was never plotted on the radar, so there's no way to even tell that he had gone over Otway at around 7 p.m. We just kind of went off of what he said. There was also a police officer that said around the time that Frederick disappeared, he saw an aircraft land in Cape Otway. Was this possibly Frederick? We don't know. The third theory is that Frederick became very disoriented, and because of his obsession with UFOs and aliens and all this stuff, that while he was kind of disoriented and hallucinating a little bit, that this is what he thought he saw. That because of this, he ended up crashing or there was some sort of malfunction with his aircraft, and then the current kind of drifted it a long distance and it eventually sank. The next theory is a little bit different and I found it on the Mutual UFO Network and it states that A 2013 review of the radio transcripts and other data by astronomer and retired U.S. Air Force pilot James McGaha and author Joe Nickel proposes that the inexperienced Valentik was deceived by the illusion of a tilted horizon for which he attempted to compensate and inadvertently put his plane into a downward so-called graveyard spiral, which he initially mistook for simple orbiting of the plane. According to the authors, the g-forces of a tightening spiral would decrease fuel flow, resulting in the rough idling, reported by the pilot. Magaha and Nickel also propose that the apparently stationary overhead lights that Valentik reported were likely the planets Venus, Mars, and Mercury, along with the other bright star Antares, which would have behaved consistent with the pilot's description. Then of course, like I discussed before, the last theory is that aliens were involved and that he was abducted and chosen by extraterrestrials and taken who knows where. Many experts say that if he crashed, not all of his aircraft would have sank. There would have been debris washing up eventually somewhere. The air traffic controller he spoke to insisted that Frederick did not sound disoriented. He was speaking fine. He just sounded like he was under a lot of stress. He claimed that five days after Frederick disappeared, another air light aircraft pilot radioed him and said he was seeing bright lights pass him by at jet speed at least three times. They were getting so close to the aircraft that he was forced to land. If he didn't, maybe his fate would have been the same as Frederick's. When it comes to Frederick's family and what they believe, his father, who has passed away quite a few years ago, he believed that aliens were involved. He really did think that his son was abducted by aliens. Now, when it comes to Frederick's brother, he thinks that that is kind of nonsense. He thinks that that's very far-fetched and he never really understood everybody's fascination with that being a legitimate theory in this case. No matter what you believe when it comes to this case, one of the strangest things that we know is a fact is that there were no passengers waiting at King Island and it wasn't crayfish season. So why did he make this up? This little tidbit is kind of what makes people more lean towards him just landing somewhere else and starting a new life somewhere. But again, where's the aircraft? And there would have been reports of people seeing him throughout the years, so I don't know. There is currently a plaque at the Otway Lighthouse commemorating Frederick Valentik's strange disappearance. His remaining family members visit the location every year on the anniversary of his disappearance, and they just kind of stand at the edge, they look out to the sea, 
and they wonder what happened to Frederick all those years ago. I know people are going to want my opinion when it comes to this case. Now, I don't know where I stand, honestly, but I'll tell you this. I am a firm believer that we are not the only beings in the universe. So, but again, he could have just crashed, his aircraft could have sank, and it just so happened to have never been found. But I do believe that he saw something in the sky that night, and whatever he saw was the reason he's never been seen or heard from again. Whether he crashed or whether he was abducted, I believe that he saw something, especially due to so many other claims from people saying that they saw the same thing weeks before, weeks after, the day that it happened. I truly believe that he saw something, whether it was man-made or whether it was from another planet. Of course, let me know your opinions down below in the comments, and after you leave your opinion, go check out Michael's video. Gotta go check it out. It's gonna be a good one. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.